started. Uh, my name is Mark Watkins. I'm the director of coaching and manager of basketball here at Hillside. Uh, we invited Ian Stacker to come along and teach uh, all the rest of the coaches in the 12s and 14s and 10s to uh, teach them how to play uh, the VJ and the old rules on man to man defense. So we wondered why I pushed the commission to and the uh, domestic presidents to make the change is because we wanted to get in line with the, with the common style of play around Australia. So I didn't like to see young kids running down and just standing in the keyway and standing there like trees in under, under age 12 and 14. I, I felt that that's not beneficial to the overall development of the player and the coach. So that's why I've asked Liam to come along and, uh, and show you an hour of, of uh, how to teach proper man-to-man -man defense in both the full court and half court. All right, so uh, Ian's credentials, if you haven't read the flyer, um, NITP head coach for Big Metro for a long time. I was lucky to be underneath him. I was being his assistant at, at the World Championships. Won a gold medal for the under 22s, 23s here in Melbourne, thanks to the USA. Uh, also a, a, an NBL coach, been to many grand finals, won championships with uh, Nalwani, East Side, etc., etc. So he's a very experienced coach. Uh, so we're very lucky to have him today. Uh, before uh, I forget later on, boys, thanks for coming along and, and being demonstrators. You're going to learn a lot about man and man defense today. Okay? So without further ado, I'll hand over to Ian and we'll get started. Thank you. 
chest to chest with them is one of those uh, factors that's going to determine whether they're going to be a good player or not. Let's see them go garden here in one on one. Can you garden in one on one? First thing you can step back with just a good sign. Okay? So when you're ready, you hit the ball, okay, and just and then play and you go, no, warm up, wait, let's see what happens. Defensively, and something that coaches should try and introduce to players as early as possible. 
Legs tries to run past him, but Arvan now like forward pivot and, and continue to stay in his way, uh, maybe holding. Can't be a foul if the referee calls it, okay? Uh, <laughs> no, no, the ball's not going through the air, okay? So he's, if he moves this way to rebound the ball, I would forward pivot and block him out. If he moves this way, I would reverse pivot to block him out, okay? Most players just stand there, okay? Good players will, will go in and try and rebound. Okay, so I put that arm bar on him initially to see where the ball is going, and then depending on where it goes, I might go and get it, or one of my teammates might get it. But the main thing is I stop him from running in and getting it. Okay, that arm bar is, is what I use. So, on ball defense is stay between your player and the basket. I think the simplest rule for young kids is tell them to point their bum towards the basket. Their bum is facing the basket, they're usually in a pretty good position. Close enough to touch the ball, you need to make them aware of the fact that they're going to defend the pass, the dribble and the shot. When the, um, when the player picks up their dribble, now they can play closer. Some, some coaches like to have their defenders yell out dead, uh, which alerts the rest of their team that this player can no longer dribble it. And they can put more pressure on the pass or the shot. Uh, if they pass it, jump in the direction of the ball. If they shoot it, step in, arm bar, and block them out. Okay? If you can get under 12s to block out, then you're a much better coach than me. Okay? It's a tough job. What I've found with, uh, with our high school kids is you just got to keep giving them the message. You know, it's, it's kind of Sometimes it kind of finds its way in, uh, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, you, you just, some things you just got to keep plugging away with, they're not going to pick it up straight away, okay? Uh, so that's on-ball defense in the quarter court. What I would say about the full court, this, uh, so you're going this way, Max, you're going this way here, is the defender now has a lot more space uh, to be able to make up for mistakes. Okay, if, if I'm guarding someone here and they blow by me here, well they're right on the rim and I don't have much space to make up the mistakes. But in the full court, if he was to blow by me, this way just means to, you've got all that court there to sprint, run and catch up. And usually a player who's not dribbling the ball, who's just running, should be able to catch a player who is uh, dribbling the ball. Okay, so in a full court scenario, different tactics are you can put pressure on the player who's got the ball, or you can just keep, keep the gap between them and just force them to bring the ball up at a slower, a slower pace. Okay, you can channel them to one side, so if you want to keep them on that side of the floor, you might overplay in the middle, and push them down the sideline, and as they get closer and closer to the basket, adjust your stance so you're a little bit more squared up. Um, if you are putting pressure on, and they happen to get past you, one of the common terms is to go from sliding to a bit more close here. So running, run, then get back in front of you and back down to sliding. So the term slide, run, slide is one of those fundamental movements that you need to practice if you intend on being a, a good full court man to man defensive team. So uh, again, you can put pressure on, and, and uh, the more pressure you put on, the more likely they are to make a mistake, bring the ball up the court, and you might be able to force an error. Again, as I said, you've got a small, quick, Athletic team, that's a good tactic. Uh, if you don't think you've got the speed to counter the other team's speed, then a good tactic is to play off a bit further and, and just try and slow them down a little bit. Um, so that's what you can do in, in a, a full court scenario on ball defense. Anyone got any questions on on ball defense?
so the player is playing away from the ball, needing to be in a position to help this player who's got the ball. They also need to be in a position to guard their player if they get past the ball. Okay? Now, the, uh, the common position we refer to is called a defensive triangle. That is where a defender gets about halfway between his player and the ball. Okay? Um, they stand in a position where they can see both the ball and the play of the game. We call that peripheral vision. Okay? So uh, you step back far enough where you can see both. Okay? And uh, so now you're in a position if uh, James the blow by Max this way, you'd be in a position to help stop that. Okay? Harry? If uh, the ball was thrown to Max, to Moss, you'd be in a position now to go to come and guard him quickly. You're now an on ball defender. You're now the off ball defender. Okay? Now throw it right back there. Throw right back over there. Now, um, for teaching purposes and, and being able to communicate with your players, we use a few imaginary lines in basketball to help uh, as, as reference points uh, for the players. The line between the player with the ball and his other four players on his team is called the passing line. Okay? So the only way the ball can get to Harry is to find this straight line here. So that's the passing line. Okay? Other, other lines that are important for man-to-man -man defense is an imaginary line that runs down the middle of the court, often referred to as the split line. Okay? It splits the court into half. Okay? But it's just imaginary. Okay? You've got to imagine it's there. That's what imaginary is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, the line between the ball and the basket is another important line when we talk about uh, defense. We'll, we'll sort of talk about that in a second. Okay? So, a few lines to think of there. Now, uh, a good rule for off ball defenders is to have their back facing the line between the ball and the basket. That helps put them in pretty good position. Okay? So, if you're here, your back's facing that line, you're, you're in a pretty good uh, spot. Now this triangle is determined, the size of the triangle is determined by how close uh, the player is to the ball. So uh, we want the off-ball defender to be around about halfway between their player and the ball. Okay? Some coaches say a third, some say, you know, like, I just find a halfway to be about the easiest thing the players remember. So if Maximus, you walk towards the ball, your triangle will get smaller and smaller. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Alright, because he's still halfway between his player and the ball. Now walk towards that corner over there. Okay. As his player moves away from the ball, his triangle gets bigger and bigger. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay? So he can afford to be further off his player towards the ball now. Um, and as teaching points, if we think about the court as being from the edge of the keyway to the sideline, think of this being the right side of the court, over there being the left side of the court, and the red up the middle here being the middle of the court, as a general guide, if the ball is on the right side of the court and a player is guarding someone on the left side of the court, their position should be the split line. Okay, that's where that split line comes into play. Now, the split line is really only relevant when the ball is either on the right side or the left side. It's not relevant when the ball is in the middle of the court. Okay? So that split line there is about where um, Harry should be. So what we're saying there is if um, you decide to throw the ball to Max, the flight time of the ball will be enough time for Harry to quickly get there and get to a good on-ball defensive position. Okay? Throw it back here. What being off in a defensive triangle also allows um, uh, Harry to be able to do is it, is it buys him time if his player tries to cut to the basket. All right. So if you imagine that, uh, that I'm you now, Harry, just come off. That I'm over here and I'm guarding Max this close to the basket over here, and he's this far away from the basket, and he quickly cuts towards the basket. That thing there. Then he's got space to get past me. Alright, go back over there, Max. But if I'm over here in a defensive triangle, and now he tries to cut between me and the basket, I've got that time to see him coming, and I can maintain that distance of, of being between him and the basket. So if the ball's passed to him, or tried to pass to him, I have a chance of stealing it, or worst case scenario, if he catches it, I can quickly get between him and the basket. Alright, whereas if I'm over here, come back over here. I'm over here thinking I'm doing a great job on defense and now he quickly cuts 
outside the court, so that's his point of reference there. But um, again, the more he can just maintain a position of looking straight ahead and seeing his man and the ball, the more effective the defender is going to be. If he kind of gets locked in, just watching his man, uh, Max might be coming in away and up, you know nothing about that. If you get too caught up in watching the ball, your player might change position and uh, uh, he might move into a scoring opportunity. Okay, so trying to maintain that peripheral vision is the Xanadu. Uh, it's almost impossible to do. Okay, players need to turn their head and keep adjusting their position all the time, uh, but they need to try and maintain knowledge of where the ball is and where the player their guard is. Alright, so try to go back here to uh, Jay. Come out here to two again.
seems as if young coach needs to argue with other coaches about how they care. Uh, if you can do either one well, then it's good enough. Okay? The best defenders that I have coached have always been people who open to the ball. Okay, because they're very ball orientated. Okay, so if there's a situation here, come back here, Max, where just walk slowly back through. If he goes back door on me, and now I open to the ball, I can play the ball. If the ball's passed, I have a chance of picking off that pass, irrespective of where Max is. Okay, and often I can just come back and feel where he is anyway, but I've really got focus on the ball. Whereas with a head snap, come back here, with a head snap, so now he goes, I turn my head, uh, the ball could be coming and I know nothing about it. Okay, so it's, even though it's briefly for a moment, um, I've found that better defenders uh, tend to be people who open to the ball. Okay, but that doesn't mean you can't do the other thing well either. Okay? Alright, now the defensive triangles apply in a full court scenario as well. So you've got the ball here. Um, okay? So, uh, Max is going to stand right down the wing down here. Sorry, how are you going to go? Okay, where do you reckon you should be, Harry? You're going in. There you go, on that way. That's it. Okay, so that's his defensive triangle. Uh, really good thing to do with, with young kids is have them point, point one finger towards the person they're guarding, like a gun. Alright, one finger towards the ball, and that helps them maintain that position. Okay. He could probably play a bit closer to that passing lane, but that's about where he should be. Okay, now, in under 12s, they can't throw the ball that far anyway. Okay, can they? Okay, so anyone who goes down that far is almost out of the play anyway. Um, but in uh, season basketball, that's about where they should be. Just start walking the ball down. As the ball comes down the court, his triangle gets smaller and smaller. He's always trying to maintain that, that position of halfway between his player and the ball. Okay, just stop there. Just go to the other side over here now, Max. So now he's on the right side, the ball's coming down the left side. Split line. That goes about where he should be. Go right back up there again now. Ball's that far away. Split line. Okay? So, uh, the principles stay the same in full court play or man or half court play. Uh, the players off the ball have got their player that they're guarding. Where the ball is and where the player they're guarding is should be the points of reference for them to be able to uh, set up in, in their defensive triangle. And again, if you're playing an open stance or a closed stance, it's your it's your call. Okay. One of the fa fundamental things, just have me here again, you guys. So Max, right here. See the ball there. One of the fundamental uh, breakdowns of defense is when an offensive player gets between their player and the ball. So obviously we're probably so that Max can come in here and he passed the ball easily. So you're going to play an area here. He passed the ball easily. Then the ball's penetrating close to the basket and they have a good scoring opportunity. So good defenders are always going to try and stay in that defensive triangle. When you get in close in play here, like we have in the middle of the key here, that's where an armbar is, is very useful. So if he comes across here and tries to get between me and the ball, I can use that armbar just to hold my ground. Okay, again, if it's bench, uh, below 90 degrees, that's legal. If you extend it out, that's going to be called as a foul. Sometimes, sometimes it won't be called as a foul. Okay, so um, the, the amount of contact that occurs is a judgment the referee makes. What they're supposed to look at is does someone gain an advantage through the contact? If one player gains an advantage through uh, contact,
basically all that great attention you were just paying to me a little while ago. Alright, so, pretty good. Split line. Okay, your guys on the right side of the court, or left side, you go, so you're right in here. Okay, open stance, split line, good job. Your guys in the middle, similar, but if you're guarding someone in the middle of the court, and the ball is on the left side or the right side, then halfway between the player and the ball. That's what they should do. Okay? If the ball is in the middle of the court, so let's go here to Harry. Here we go. Alright? Now everybody should be halfway between their player and the ball. Okay? So the split line isn't relevant when the ball is in the middle of the court. Only relevant when it's on the right side or the left side. Okay? So you've got um, so you probably could cheat off more towards the ball now, so you're out of here, mate, you're a good defense. Where's your passing lane? Come back here. Out here, about halfway. Got able to see your player with the ball. A little bit more towards. Okay, so everyone's in about the right position there. Now, it's really easy when everyone's just standing still. <laughs> you can come out and put them in the right spots. The hard thing is when the ball is moving and all the players are moving. That's when it becomes harder to play man to man defense. Um, like the, the rules don't change, the degree of difficulty just changes. It's just harder to, to maintain the position. Uh, let's have a look and see what exit balls pass here. Show me where you should go. One, move on defense, where should you do? Offense just stand still. Okay? So are you halfway between your player and the ball? About there, I reckon. That's about halfway. There's the ball. There's your player about halfway. Okay, you move right down the corner. Where should we all be now? Okay, step off a little bit. Split line now, split line now. Um, but you move down to the corner there, just go to that wing over there for So you two are on the split line, okay? You're covering the lane line here. Throw it out here, jump to the ball. That's it, adjust your position, throw it here, jump to the ball. Come on, go to the next quick. That's it, pass it over here. Jump to the ball. Oh, it's not. So where's the ball now? Left wing, where should you be? Where should you be? Split line. Okay, so it's on the left side, you've got someone on the right side, you're on the split line. Ball goes down here. They want you to adjust a little bit. Alright, so they're, they're the perfect positions to be on off the ball. Okay, now like I said, it's, it's uh, not easy when the ball is moving and the players are moving. What I want to kind of just show you now is what. Sorry. Post players, so come back and 
close by now. Alright? So good defense would be you on the split line. If this player was to cut up to the top here, and you just stay back there and guard the basket, alright, that would be considered zoning. Okay, you should come to that player and be in a normal defensive triangle. Okay? So if they stay back and just guard the basket where a player there guarding is cut from the weak side to the strong side, call it. So you have a split line. The side of the court the ball is on is often referred to as the strong side. The other side is referred to as the weak side of the court. Okay, so if someone cuts from the weak side to the strong side, but the defender just stays in this position, this is where you put your big, your tall kid, just stand there. Okay, it's not guarding anybody. Again, that would be uh, considered zoning. Okay, and they're the main uh, scenarios that occur. That is, over helping where these players who should be on the split line go right across to the late line and are blocking it, really blocking it up. Or when the ball is in the middle of the court and everybody gets their feet inside the paint and just tries to go to the, uh, the key area. Okay? Alright, let's have a look at some, just some general play now and see if we can identify what the issue was. So, uh, uh, we've got Darks have got the ball, is that right? So you're on offense now, Max. You're on offense over there. So, uh, team on offense, I want you guys to try and score. Defense, you're trying to stop it. Is everyone appropriately warmed up? <laughs> Alright. If I call that stop, I just want you to freeze in the position that you're in. Okay? Alright, here we go. Let's try and score. Go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Right. 
practicing this in your club scenarios. What I would imagine most of you have is practice sessions where you might get six kids, eight kids. It's a luxury if you get ten. Uh, you get a half court and you get maybe an hour to practice with. Does anyone get any better than that? No, okay, that sounds almost luxury, that isn't it? Alright. So give me um, uh, a line here behind you. A line there here behind you. Come on in those lines. To the side. Alright, so first two step out on the low block. First two step out on the low block. Cross the ball here. So it's two on two. Well, it's two on two continuous. So darts and defense. Offense is going to make a lead out. This lead out somewhere. So now they're over there. So now he's playing the on ball defense. Your off ball defense. Okay, where should you be already? There. And at the start, you just have the offense have to stay in their half of the court. Okay? You're going to make a decision about whether to pass it, shoot it, or dribble it. You've got to be ready to help or ready to guard your play at the end. Alright? If you two score, you stay on offense. Next two defenders come in. Alright? If you two get the stop, you're the new offensive players. Alright, go from there, go. Jump to the ball. Up and go. Go stay in your half of the court. Okay? Here we go, keep playing, go. Seven, six, five, four, three. Box out. Alright, good job. You two offensive players are out. You two in your offense. Start down the low block. Start up the low block. You two on defense. Here we go, play ball. Home lead, home lead. Spin line, Harry. Spin line, Harry. That's it. Jump to the ball. Box out. Alright, two new defenders. Here we go. Throw it in. Two new guys in. Quick, make that Harry on offense. Let's go. Let's go, Harry. Here we go. Spin line, spin line. Jump to the ball. Jump to the ball. Thanks. That's it. I don't think anyone's going to, I don't think anyone will be too upset to be in the final time. 
Don't press if you want to in a full court scenario. Okay, so you can double team if you want to, you can trip, you know, whatever you like. It's this rule is, is brought in for when it gets down here and now everybody should be going to play. Again, the main focus of the rule is to stop five defenders standing inside the kick, just go out and kick. Okay? And it, uh, it needs to be repeated actions like that. Because there's going to be times when someone's just going to get lost, it's going to look like they're zoning, but they actually just don't know where their player is. Uh, if they do that every possession, then, uh, then I think you could argue that they're zoning. But it's repeated um, uh, players just standing in the key. Yep, no worries. You can half court press, double team. Uh, as soon as that ball is passed out, though, then they need, they need a match up. Double team up here, no worries. Okay, again, we're talking about when it gets down here. Yeah. So if you want to double team, you can. You could double team, you could double team here. If you can get under 12s, double team and rotate properly and get back to man to man, and you're doing a good job. Right? Double team, and you've got three people standing in the key around the basket, then I think you'd be in trouble. Okay? As long as they're out playing man to man off the ball, you're not going to have any problems. Sorry. Any if, you find, yep. if you find you've got 60% of the time the boys are following their players, yep. the, the two on the split line, obviously they get dragged down, they switch to someone on the split line, they come up to another position and they shuffle across. Um, the intention, if you can see the intention is there to, keep, to get the kids to be doing that, um, are they going to continue uh, for that? Or is it, as long Who's as policing it, Mark? Is it the, if is it like the BJBL with video? Yep. Because it's purely, you know, if you're trying to do the right thing, teach them, but it's, you know, yep. never play so yep. Like to a, what happens with the BJBL is if someone thinks they're being zoned, then you get your camera out your phone out and film it. Yeah. Irrespective of whether you're not supposed to film kids or not, you just do it. Yeah. Okay? And that becomes your evidence. But it needs to be, like I say, it needs to be not just one possession, it needs to be a lot of possessions to show that they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Now that then goes and an appropriately experienced coach is going to look at it and say, yeah, they're just zoning, or no, clearly they're just they're switching and, and that's fine. Because I play a press or two different presses, but one press I've got sinks back into a a good defence line, but I've got three guards out and two that are not in the team, but they do rotate. As long as you guard the players now, um, just give me uh, Max get on the split line, go on that wing over there for us. Can else just step off for a moment? Uh, where's Harry? Harry the defender here. Max, you come out here. If you had this happen, where you could just exchange spots, Change spots, Max Cut from there, stay there, Harry. That's it. Change spots again. Just stay there. Change spots again. That would be considered zoning by an experienced coach. They're going to say, you're not playing those guys in the scan on the strip line. Yeah. Okay? So that kind of thing would be, would be zoning. Okay? If uh, Max was to fly out and run up here and he just stood there, that's going to be considered zoning. Yeah. Okay? They need to be, you need to be able to show that your players are in the of triangle yeah. down the play. So if you use the example of like a shell drill where you're teaching that two pass away, yep. let them do their thing, would that be considered as a... Not if the offense is just standing there. Yeah. You know, so if the ball's over here, you go to the corner, Max. Go to the corner. Go and guard the barrier. And now what it doesn't matter what everyone else here is doing on offense, they're all running around. The Jays just stand in that corner. Then Max can just stand on that split line. Yep. Okay, you've got to get Jay moving to show that Max is not guarding somewhere. Yep. Okay, but he's just standing there, or he's in good defensive position. Yep. Okay, so the onus is on the offense to, to move players to show that uh, they're not actually guarding something. In that situation, you can do whatever you as long as yep. you know, if everyone else is moving around and he's just standing, what we need to do is get Jay cut into the top of the key. Now, if Max just stays there. Yeah. Okay? And uh, you know, I find sometimes that we get to get caught up in in um, in how it's 
it's going to be interpreted. If, if you were trying to teach man and man your kids and, uh, and trying to teach them about dealings and triangles, then you don't need to worry about all that stuff. Okay? Um, if you're trying to do as, a, as the rule uh, intends, then, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay? Now, I have, a, um, I have a website that has that two-on-two -two drill. It has the shell drill, which is a common drill for teaching man and man defense. It has a heap of different drills on it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to go and have a look at it. It's called allstarcoaching.com.au. And uh, that's why I didn't kind of go and spend too much time on drills tonight because there's a heap of different drills on that site um, that are targeted at junior club coaches. Okay, I'm say it's nothing kind of join it. Um, and then you get access to all the other things you might get. The occasional flight from me about camp for some of my money. Alright. Yep. Yep. Um, the uh, Mark, the club are giving everybody a DVD. Is that right? Or how does everyone get access to that BJBL no zone? This is a dinosaur. She's still learning about electricity.
ball side of the play to go. They're always on the ball side of the play to go. They're going to be around about in the right position. Okay? So uh, thanks for your time tonight.
Triple team, double team, four players on one. 